Okay, hey everybody. Uh, going to be doing Bumblebee today for the Transformers Original uh, Generation 1 series. And i um, going to share this with the page real quick as always. Um, what I've done here is I've broken this one down. I know these. I said these were going to be a lot of action shots. Um, just wanted to show you guys that uh, it is going to be an action shot. But the thing is I've decided to do these puzzle style. I'm going to do this one just a little bit different uh, because what's going to happen is as you can see the gun and the hand and stuff go right off the side here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in a couple pieces since I'm doing 10 or 12 of these uh, transformers and uh, if you didn't get to watch the cliff jumper piece yesterday here you go here's cliff jumper there you go he's pretty solid and he's part of another set of one of these as well um, so I've decided to ba break this down into a big puzzle set so that we can get uh, some bigger pieces in the uh, card series and go from there. Um, like I said yesterday, I'm not going to get into all the politics and stuff, but with the way Facebook was running yesterday, uh, you know, with all of the, the knees taken during the NFL games and all that, uh, it's been pretty dramatic. And I understand what's going on politically, and that's fine, but we're not going to go there. Uh, this is all about... The fun of the ex escape of watching, you know, the artwork and discussing comics. But um, with all the tension going on, I decided to do something a little different and shake things up a little bit and uh, have a little fun with it. So what I'm doing, like I said, I just decided to do uh, on the fly. I decided to do a puzzle set. So this is going to be the first piece of that. You guys will get, uh, you know, strips of these as I build them up and I'll show you along the way. So um, the pictures definitely are going to be action shots and they're going to be there. Hey, Noel, how you doing, man? Um, I'm going to be docking these out fairly quick, and like I said, they're going to be kind of chunky sometimes, uh, but it'll all come together as it comes uh, to a completion. So, you know, uh, hang with me, and we'll discuss it. But um, for today, I was going to be talking a little bit about um, some submission crossover, because I've been asking uh, around a lot, because I've been getting a, a, a big question about it, of what the current situation is with submitting to Marvel and DC and uh, you know I talked about that a while back about uh, submitting to it and thinking it was isolated and whatnot and then I found out that um, as long as you submit to the editor and don't hound them to death you can still submit to Marvel and DC um, you have to go through different editors and you can show them work and they will get you stuff but you have to make contact with an editor there so if you want to make it into DC Comics, they don't have a submissions office anymore at all, and they do their workshops strictly. But what you can do is I found out every editor that I can t I've talked to has said flat out, yes, we accept submissions if you send the artwork directly to me, but you have to send me one, you have to send me sequ sequential pages, and two, you have to send me uh, validation of artwork, which means... By what they say, you have to have proof that you've worked in comics before, before they'll even touch you, because Warner Brothers won't allow them to hire you if you don't have previous ex proven ground experience as a comic artist. So if you're looking to get a, a, a creator position in the comic industry, uh, you definitely want to get in there and get your feet wet with um, independent comics or creating you know, self-published stuff, because otherwise you're not going to make it. Um, I mean, that's been the big thing that every editor I've ever talked to said for the last, oh, it's good 10 years. But now it is definitely a 100% lockout if you don't have pre-existing work. So um, if you're interested in comics, definitely um, take consideration for this and take notice of it and move forward. Um, I've been doing pages all day, so these, these cards aren't holding up um, to my my heavy line here so I keep snapping it off but um, anyway yeah that's that's one of those things um, if you're looking to submit your work and you want to get it out there and you want to get noticed and you want to be a professional whether it's a writer inker especially a writer if you want to be a, a penciler a colorist any of that in any phase or form you're gonna have to go through the editorial process and you're gonna have to show that you're already pre-existing and I know a lot of people disagree with doing that because it's building a fan base. 
without the publisher and then you turn around and say, well, you know, if I now that I've got the publishing done, I don't need that publisher. And I firmly agree with that. But um, if your goal and mission in life is to work for a publishing company for one of the main two while they're still functioning, the best bet to do it is to get in your door that way. Um, I've talked with some of the guys over at IDW and some of the uh, Devil's Do and some of the uh, people over at Image, and they've said the same thing. You know, um, you can submit your creator on stuff, and that's one thing. Uh, Image is open to uh, new publications, but you've got to rock it, and you've got to have everybody on board and everybody be willing to pay uh, take back in so that you can get uh, the book finished. Otherwise, if you won't if you won't work back in, don't expect other people to work back in for you. And um, because that's one, that's hypocritical, and it's two, it's it's completely unethical. You know, if you're collecting money on the front end and nobody else is, so don't do that. Because I work that way a lot with, um, you know, back end for clients and, and publishers and whatnot. And I do freelance for, you know, spec. Uh, it sucks, uh, you know, for back end pay. You know, sometimes I do projects like that to help fellow publishers that I know out because they can't find anybody new to get their, their book out there and they need the help. So, you know, the reason I do it is to work not for free because of exposure, but to work for free because of the fact that I'm investing in my friend's books. So, you know, um, take it as you want to. I mean, I know, I know a lot of artists are going to disagree with that, too. They're not going to want to work for free. But if you want to work for Image Comics, you're going to have to be a team player, and you're going to have to put in the effort no matter what, and you're all going to have to work together, or you're going to have to do everything yourself, and you're going to have to have a couple of issues ahead of time uh, built up. Otherwise, they're not even going to look at your stuff if you're going to look at submitting to them. OK, because they don't pay you to work for them to produce books. They publish your book and then give you the profits and take a flat fee off of it for servicing that under their banner. And if you don't have that in your belt already, then you're not going to be able to afford to do that. So because you own the property, you keep the property, you publish the book. That's the way image works. So um, if you're going to have to get in, the, if you want to get on board there, you're going to have to do that. OK. I've done the, the footwork for you and checked it out. I know they're legit and they are taking new projects. So you're going to have to get off your butt and get out there and get the book done beforehand. Do not take a proposal to them, okay? If you take a proposal to them, you are wasting your time 100%. You are wasting your time submitting a five to six page proposal uh, comic pack to them. It is a total waste of time to submit. Because what's going to end up happening is if you don't have your book together, if they were to take your book under consideration, the first thing they're going to do is they're going to chop it to pieces because they're going to look at it as a, as a uh, fundamental construction space that you don't know what you're doing in comic books and they're going to want to put it together for you. And by putting it together for you, what's going to end up happening is, is they're going to take you to, out to dinner and um, – your book's not going to look anything like it's going to like it originally was going to because you're going to get basically for lack of a better term screwed. Um, not that they're trying to get rid of you or ruin you or anything. It's just their editorial staff is notorious for stepping in and taking over a project uh, without question if it's in the fundamental stages because it's not preset to show that the story is solid or whatever. They'll put in their editorial steps to make sure that it goes that way. And if you don't have that already undergone and the artwork finished, you may as well hang it up. So just understand that. Um, now, if you do have a book ready to go, take it over there and see what they say. You know, uh, send it to them and see what they say. And uh, good luck with it. I, I wish you the best and hopefully it works out for you. But if you're sending these five and six book page proposals and they say you're not ready yet, the reason is, is because you don't have a book yet. So get that out of the way and make the book. I mean, write full scripts, write full comics, write full, you know, um, dialogue, all of it. Write it all out. And then send them a submission package of pages from the completed book. And then when they when they say, do you have, well, is the book completed or is this just a sample set? Well, this is just a sample set. Well, then they can't hire you because you don't have the team together confirmed and you don't have the book completed. So you're not ready yet. Complete the book. That way the team's committed and then go from there. You are going to change your life 
if you submit a full book versus a package to image. That right there will help you tons, tons. Now, any other side of it with the D, with the DC Marvel Universe thing, I don't know what Marvel's really doing, other than the fact that, like I said, I got told to go directly to the editors. Uh, I don't know if you guys want to do all that legwork or not, especially with them being so far up in the air, and then with all the press kicks, you know, them saying this, that, and the other. Um, I don't know if that's going to hold up or not, but... They are still taking new talent for right now, as long as you can, as long as you have something in play that they want and need, and uh, benefit their needs. However, if you go directly and ask them, "Hey, can I submit?" They're like, "Well, no, we're not taking any new stuff." You just have to shove it in their face and say, "This is what I got. Take a look." Really, literally, they 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 are hiding it right now because they don't want to get slammed and they don't want anybody to realize that they'll still take uh, work through editors. But you have to build a relationship with the editor. Understand that. You cannot just go hammer these guys and mail off to them and say, hey, I got 50 submissions for this editor. That's what we're going to submit to. Uh, that's a bad idea. Make a connection with the editors of the books you like and you want to work for and build the rapport. If they have an inside position that's going to open up, you have to do the legwork and make sure that they're still on point to have you as the first option. This is old school. This is the way Todd McFarlane did it. This is the way a lot of artists did it. You know, they just hammered the crap out of the editors until the editors finally had an opening. And they said, I'm going to give this guy a job to get him to shut up. So that's where we're back to now because the talent pool is so thick. If you go at these editors, they're not going to care, you know, that you are the next Jim Lee or you think you're the next, you know, so-and-so. They want to see the actual comic books that you've produced to prove and back that up. So if you've got 10 comics under your belt, you've got way better of a chance, whether they're independent or not, you've got way better of a chance now than the guy before you coming in with a comic book proposal or, you know, I heard from so-and-so you might have an opening kind of thing because these guys will be looking fresh at your work. So understand that. Um, we've got to start taking a professional mentality with this stuff again, people, because I tell you, it's getting bad out there, all right? And by bad, I mean really bad because of the fact that so many people are like, well, you know, I, I'll never work for DC and Marvel because of the fact that they, they're just blah, blah, blah. Well, if you say they're blah, 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 guess what? They're going to hear that and they're going to start saying that, you know? I thought I was blacklisted because of the, uh, the uh, fact of, you know, my, my review comments that I made in my uh, podcast. And it turned out that's not the case at all. It's just the fact that I've always been told to submit submission packages with them and submitted submission packages. So the stuff that I did get uh, in the gate was because of uh, a fluke accident because of the way I sent it differently, okay, over the years. And trust me. You do want those projects if you can get them because still, you know, no matter whether you hate the superhero thing right now or whatever, it's still the, the best place to go to at the point is to self-publish. But if you can get into the mainstream, Marvel and DC are still top notch. Um, Image is a great place to go as far as that goes, okay? Because, I mean, I, I've changed my perspective on it because of the fact that I found out they are still open at least to a degree, and we have to respect those positions just like they, we want them to respect us as independent creators. We have to continue to respect them, okay? So that's what you guys need to do is consider that. And um, if you got a story that works for Marvel and it won't work for anybody else and it won't work for, you know, if, or if it'll work for DC and it won't work for anybody else, get together with an artist or, a, you know, a writer combined with somebody and get that sucker knocked out Get it produced, and if nothing else, you got fanfare. You know, if they reject it, uh, use it as fanfare. Put it online and say this is a you know this is a fanfare book, um, this is a fan fiction book, and post it online and share it as a, a fan fiction free web comic to expose how you'd write the X Men or how you'd write the Avengers or how you'd write their character because you're not making any money off of it, you're just making exposure. So there's a big difference. But um, think about that whenever you're doing these books. And think about that when you're doing these new products. You know, if you don't have a book, you're cre creating your own because you want to be a comic book artist for, for Marvel or for DC or for Image. Understand that you can do that and still make your living um, 
viable that way. Okay, you can still make you can still make a good living with working for uh, Marvel or DC because they haven't shut down. I know many of those professional uh, creators over there at both those companies, and they're great for what they're doing. However, their their parent companies have lost their marbles. But you know, as far as the publishers go, on the ground. I'm hearing a lot more changes going on than people are commercially saying, you know, because everybody's like, well, the news is saying it's dead. Well, guess what? The news in comics is just like the news and everywhere else. You know, it's media tearing everything up and getting a story. OK, so consider where the source is coming from and do the due diligence to do the work yourself. Does that make sense? I, ho I hope. Um, because I want you guys to get out there and start doing comic books again and start stop all this fear factor crap and start knocking some stuff out. And, I, you know, if you want to do, uh, like I said, if you want to do the X-Men and they won't hire you, you know, go off and do a fanfare book and show that you're doing the X-Men, whether you want to or not, your way. And you might get Marvel's attention to where Marvel and DC pays attention and says, wow, you know, that dude's actually got a decent concept right there. We can't take it, but... Because it would make, you know, it's still, whether you put it in public domain for free or not, it's still your product. Um, just be sure and copyright it. That way you wrote it for free, you know. Um, you can't, you know, and give respect and copyright to the characters being owned by who they are owned by, but yet the writing credit goes to you. And understand that. And if you do that, you're going to get exposure for writing those books and writing those characters, and it's going to open that game up. And... You know, if it's too much, do parodies. Um, I see that happen all the time. You know, people doing parodies of, of characters so that they don't have to mess with them anymore. And they do fan fiction that way. And uh, that's perfectly fine, too. I mean, they allow for that. But um, one thing I recommend doing is trying to build up a portfolio of finished products, okay? Because that is where the game is right now. If you want to make it in any company, you're going to have to come in with either one heck of a portfolio and um, just the magic bullet in your pocket to shoot the editor in the butt and say, okay, now you're in love with me directly out of Cupid's <laughs> quiver because I'm telling you, what's going to end up happening is you're going to be like, well, okay, I've got this great stuff and I'm going to submit it and they're going to say, well, where's the development? You know, and that's going to be the shot in the foot. Get out there and build yourself up a comic book and do the work. Work with one of these smaller companies and build a comic book. Or go on and make your own webcomic. Do whatever you got to do to get that done legitimately within legal ramifications uh, pending so that you don't get, you know, stuck in jail for it or anything crazy. Um, don't rip anybody off. But get it done. Get it out there and build yourself up something that has at least three to five issues to it. If you don't, you're not going to make it because this stuff right now of everybody going, you know, saying, well, I've gone to the Comic Con and I know I know Joe so and so and I know, you know, Amy this and I know Mike that. And, uh, you know, I've been to Image and I know Image and blah, blah, blah. But yet, why aren't you working for them if you aren't? Well, that's because I'm too busy going to cons and I've got eight cons this year. And, you know, the cons are keeping me swamped and I'm overbooked and. I've got all these excuses going on, and, 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 and I can't produce comic books. I have no time for that. Well, that's why you're not getting hired. You know, it's like I talked about a couple times back. It's uh, one of those things where you have to get your head out of your butt and start producing the books you need to produce. And going to conventions is when you have no, couple, no publications in place, when you have no comics in place, let me put it that way, um, and you're going to conventions, if you're not a fan going to the conventions, you're wasting your time as a pinup artist. You are absolutely wasting your exposure because when somebody comes up to you and says the bomb question of, well, what have you done? And you say, well, I've got stuff in production. You're screwed because they're going to know that you're not doing anything. You're, you're a card artist and they're going to walk away. And that'll be the last you hear from them. And that'll be the, the last they hear from you because you won't be able to afford anything after that point. Um, start taking this stuff seriously, guys. I see this all the time, you know. Um, I, I do <laughs> seriously, seriously, um, tell all my students all the time, go in, 
get the artwork done, produce comic books. You know, what, what's the last comic book you produced? Oh, well, I did this one, this one, and this one. Well, okay, when were they? Well, 2005, 2007, and 2009. Oh, whoops. You know, that's been one of my major downfalls. My personal experience downfalls is the fact that I don't produce fast enough. Um, as of, oh, goodness, about June of this past year, I did 11 project, projects last year that are at some point a publication now. I had 19 the year before, and I've slowly slowed down, um, steadily slowed down over the last couple of years. So be sure and get, you know, back in the game and get your stuff knocked out. Um, I had to give myself a wake-up call and start producing, you know. Um, I was just like, well, what, what have I done lately? You know, I've got all these projects on the side, and it's like I've done four or five books here, four or five books there, and it, it's just not going anywhere. Um in that old form. So I had to change up and start battling it up to get back into production because I was doing so much freelance that I wasn't doing my own books. And, you know, I don't want to be a hypocrite when I tell you guys this stuff because that's where we're at right now. I've got to start doing all my own books. And that's what I've been doing all year long is nothing but my own products. And then one or two of these, um, small freelance projects that I just really, really wanted really bad and I've committed to. Uh, but otherwise, it's just been all my work and I'm building up and building up and, you know, everybody wants to see what's going on. And the reason I've been holding off is because of the fact that I wanted to get uh, a couple of issues set up before I released it for you guys. So take it, you know, that into consideration and uh, run with it. You know, you need to get your own books out there and start producing and uh, have something to show other than just a, a four or five page portfolio. You need to have, you know, actual comic books finished up. And if you don't, you're shooting yourself in the foot by going to the con early. So don't do that uh, because you definitely are uh, messing with your success if you do that. Okay. So anyway, that's where it's at right now. But if you want to submit to Marvel and DC, go to the editors of the books that you like and start drawing sample sets, five, six, seven pages of artwork from a couple of different issues. Give them three or four different scenarios. Give them talking set, you know, talking head page sets. Uh, you want to give them a talking head page set. You want to give them an action sequence. You want to give them a solo sequence of, you know, one or two people. You want to give them a group sequence of, you know, interactivity. Get it across the board. If you don't, you're not going to get it. And, um, a lot of these publishers won't tell you that because they're going through so many transitions. Now, if you talk to some of them, they will be like, well, I don't see, you know, the point on the surface. But if you're talking to the editors, the editor is still working. They're still producing books. And until they stop producing books, there's no reason for you not to get in their face and say, hey, man, you know, um, you got another book coming up. And until you tell me that the series is dead or being terminated, I'm going to keep submitting because I want to draw this book. And that's what you need to start doing. And if you do that, you're going to be in their pie hole and they're going to be like, hey, you, you know, I need room to eat. So um, that's where it's going to be at. And if you do that, you're going to get change your game. So be sure and do it. You know, get in their face a little bit. It's a good it's a good thing for everybody if you do, because it's going to shake things up. So I just think it's a good thing to do. And, um, you know, a lot of people are going to disagree with that, but that's OK, too. Because I want to get in there and have, you know, everybody start to see what's going on with these comic book companies and start to take them seriously as an opportunity to open their doors back up and get talent instead of throwing everybody away just because of the fact that they can. I don't like the idea of that, and I'm not going to condone that anymore. So, um, you know, if you want to get in the door and you want to make comic books, get in the door and make comic books. But understand, if you don't have anything previously published, again, if you don't have anything previously published, they're going to eat your lunch. So um, the editors aren't even going to pay attention to you. And you're wasting your time if you don't have publications pre pre-existing. So get with publishers. Get with small publishers that need artists. Help them out. Instead of making fun of them for not paying you, you know, make them back and compensate. If they're putting the book out on Kickstarter and they get paid, Make them pay you up front. Make them do Kickstarters for paying you. 
instead of selling their books, you know, for 150 copies like we talked about, make them pay, a, do a Kickstarter to get money to pay you. That's awesome that they should do that. Um, if not, you know, make them pay subsets of pages. Uh, work for a lower a lower fee to get started to get your to get, build up your portfolio. Look at it as an investment of you taking a discount on your fees so that you can get pages done to get books done so you can show full books of product that have go, gone to publication, whether it's uh, digital format, print format, trade format, whatever, webcomic, whatever. Get it out there, get it going, get it done. Because if you don't, don't be too prideful to get in, get in the game and get producing. Because if you're not producing, you're not producing. You know, plain and simple. That's the answer to it. Uh, because it doesn't matter if you're being paid for it or not. If you're not making comics, you're not making comics. And the only way you're going to get to make comics is if you're making comics. Okay? And you still got to do comics for free at least to show samples for these guys for building portfolios. So why not have something in place to where you can get paid for it as well because it's still in publication, whether it's on-demand publication or not right at the moment. It doesn't matter if you make two sales with it or not. It's about completing the book and getting the credit to say, I committed to this comic. And what better way to commit to a comic book than actually getting in there and getting it done by your own sweat and work and effort and energy and time invested into that that issue, you know? So, I mean, you're an, invest in, you're an investment in yourself, and if you're willing to do it, do it. If not, that's fine, too. If you've got a, a higher standard or whatever you believe to where you're not going to make it, and you're not going to go out and you're not going to say, okay, well, I'm going to do, I'm not going to do a book for free. I'm not going to do it. I refuse. Well, then that's your loss. And that's, you know, if you want to be stubborn like that and you don't have a book going on and you can't get hired, there's something wrong with what you're doing and you got to rethink about it. And like I said, I'm not trying to coach anybody to do free stuff. I'm just saying, do whatever you got to do to make it happen. Okay. That's where it's at because that's the big thing right there. That's the big step forward because you're not a comic artist and you're, if you're not making comics and you're not, whether you're paid or not, if you're not producing to show that you can make comics and you have no comics to prove it, then therefore you are again stuck because you are not doing comics. So what are you going to do to do it? Well, you got to start doing what you love to do. And if you're not making comics then you're not making it, then you're not a comic artist. I've said that numerous times before and I've ticked a lot of people off saying that. But the thing is, what comics have you drawn today? I mean, I can verify right now, right here in front of you, that I've drawn Bumblebee today. Pretty solid. You know what I mean? So think about it. But anyway, to finish this one up, what we're going to do is I'm going to cut in these windows, um, the ripples for these windows here, that windshield, and this one down here. And we're going to call it a day. There's Cliff Jumper. There's Bumblebee. Um, like I said, hope you guys dig it. Um, tomorrow, who do I have? Oh, my goodness. I put up my list. Um, let me grab it out here. What you do with the list? I put it away. Um, here we go. Let me see. It's under my table here in the desk drawer. What do we have for tomorrow? We have Wheeljack. Nice. Okay, cool. You guys will be able to see Wheeljack tomorrow. All right? So hope you dug this. Hope I didn't talk you too much to death about it. Um, but anyway, here we go. This is building up pretty quick. I appreciate it. Catch you guys tomorrow.